James? What are you doing here? Hey, we're protesting. Who's we? There were, there were more Actually, no, sorry, wait, what are you protesting? The new C63. They're getting rid of the V8. It's going to be a four-cylinder plug-in hybrid, apparently. Okay. Okay, first of all, we yeah. don't know if that's even a bad thing yet, because it could have more power, be more efficient, all the other things. We don't even know if it's true. Also, you like the 53 motor, the mild hybrid one, the, and the CLS that we do. I do, yeah. So, so what do you... What do you V8! Th okay, wait, just, I brought a W204. Yeah, the, one of the 63 actually meant something for us to drive today, so you can get your V8 fix for now. So maybe, maybe just put the sign, maybe put the sign down. You know, we can... All right. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And today's Old versus New is featuring two C63 AMGs. And yes, for better or worse, these are likely to be the last V8 C63s we ever see. And this older one from 2013 is from the W204 generation, an era where the little number on the side of the C63s meant something. Or at least it would if the previous owner of this one didn't debadge it. But no matter. The point is, under the hood is a 6.2 liter thunderstorm of eight cylinders. And this C63 has the performance package plus. So that means, along with beefier engine internals, it makes 481 horsepower and 443 pound-feet of torque. In Canada, that includes the aggressive rear LSD and more powerful brakes, among other things. And yes, I said 6.2, not 6.3 liters. That's because it was named as an homage to the original M100 6.3 liter V8 from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But the point is, is that this third gen is a proper bellowing AMG V8 sports coupe, and it's here to show its younger brother what's what. And a massive thank you to Neil and the team at Apex Motorcars here in Toronto for letting us test it today. Now, for the small matter of $70,000 more, you could have yourself a brand new C63S. Dressed to the nines in nearly all of the possible options, this 2020 bi-turbo V8 Batmobile runner-up is more powerful, more aggressive, and has a little bit more junk in its trunk, weighing in at 3,900 pounds. So what's happened in seven years, other than it just eating some cake? How much better has the C63 actually become? And has it rendered the older one a deal or a dud? Let's find out. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Admittedly, I was never obsessed with this car in the same way that I was obsessed with the M3 of the era, the E92. I always saw it as kind of a little bit more on the luxury side of things, where the M car was the precision instrument. After driving it though, I have many emotions. Anger, fear, aggression. This AMG is an absolute hooligan. It's dangerous, it's vile, and it has a noise that you cannot replicate anywhere else. All right, 2020 C63S, and then we have the added advantage here of the S, because you couldn't get an S back then, and this is quite a bit more powerful than the current C63 and it has a higher top speed, which we're not going near because it's 180 miles an hour. Which is funny, because all this car wants to do is get there. Okay, the car that James is in has a lot of advantages, obviously. It's newer, it's nicer, it's got more tech, but it also has two extra turbos. This doesn't have that. This has a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated AMG and you cannot beat that with anything. Yes, but you can, because the new car has two little turbos sitting very near the engine, giving it a whopping 503 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. It's 
that feeling of unlimited power. Every time you call upon it from the sky, it goes. This thing builds speed in a way that only a naturally aspirated car can. It's like being in a sled and being pushed down a mountain. It just builds and builds until you get to the next shift point, which admittedly is not as high as the V8 and the M car of the era. But you kind of don't care because it's more about that low end grunt. And it's more about the fact that I don't think I've ever driven a car that wants to kill its rear tires quite like this. Any amount of throttle in sport handling mode, which is not even traction control completely off, the rear is gone so easily. I am genuinely worried about James driving this car. He tends to have a heavy foot when he maybe shouldn't. Here's an example. Second gear, low speed, right hander, foot down, tail's gone, tail's gone. <laughs> it's so good. And the thing is, is that it, it has such a nice progressive lockup on that differential that it's so unbelievably predictable and it's a nice wheelbase as well. I know I said at the beginning that I anger, fear, aggression when regarding this car. I, once you get to know it, it's a big softy. It really is. It lets you be a maniac. Or as James would say, an hooligan. Oh, that pedal is addictive. And like Thomas, that power's all in the back wheels, which you can lose no problem. Yeah, you can be naughty. What a capable car. What a wonderful car. And its handling is prodigious. It's athletic. This thing's almost 4,000 pounds, but it handles lighter than that. Because when you test it, when you really push it, and you throw it into those corners, you can control it so well. The steering is wonderful. Engine response is great. Let down a little bit by the transmission, which in comfort mode is a bit jerky around town, and even in Sport Plus, takes a second to downshift. But drop it into manual. Burble's on the downshifts. That angry V8 roar on the up. And speeds that get you in trouble. Not these ones. But you could. You could get in trouble. Not now, but you could. This is a full-blown AMG. And it sounds good. Although that particulate filter has muted the sound a little bit. We've lost some of the claps. But none of the bass. Oh, I don't want to give this car back. Admittedly, this is a tire killer. It's a destroyer of worlds, and I love every part of that aspect of it. But if I put the transmission, which is the MCT, by the way, it's like that multi-clutch thing, which is less jerky than I heard, and you turn the traction control back on, this is a very comfortable cruiser. There's no unnecessary vibrations. Driving position is great. Visibility is good. Seats are comfortable. And the ride, while stiff and sporty, is not punishing. But, and there is a very large but, this is very compromised in its ride. It's very harsh, even in comfort mode. It is, I want to say, unlivable. And for that reason, unfortunately, it kind of fails in that luxury department. Because if a luxury car, and a Mercedes is a luxury car, however you paint it, has to at least have that ability to go smooth when you want it. And this is only on the 19 inch wheels, you can get 20s. For the money that you're spending, I think it needs a better quality damper. Even in its most comfortable mode, I can't get it to the point where Toronto roads feel okay. Out here though, whew, comes alive. And that's the other thing in the city, Transmission's a bit jerky. The gearbox, this nine speed, is not telepathic enough. So I found myself in individual mode where I've put the transmission in sporty and the ride in comfort. And that seems to work for me. In fact, the whole chassis of this car feels sophisticated. It feels really dialed in. It has a pretty fast steering ratio. The steering doesn't really talk to me that much. But I mean, 
it's just what you need to do that confidently, easily, safely. And the front end is fairly sharp. It balances uh, aggressive driving and comfort very well while still letting you tear up the pavement. So it almost has it all. It has the bellowing AMG. It has the AMG aggressive looks. It has an unbelievable interior, which we're going to talk about in a second. But that ride is unfortunately a letdown for me. I didn't live in the city, though. Maybe you can forgive it. So, conclusion. This car is a monster, and I love it. Let's go talk about the styling. Well? So much performance. No, I know. It's so fast, but this is fast in a different way, which you will find out in a uh, Yeah, I'm really looking forward to driving this. Okay, can you promise me something? What? You know, like when you, when you turn corners sometimes and you just give it way too much throttle and I go, careful, James, you might spin out. Like in the black wing? Yeah, it's like in the black wing. Yeah. It's an outtake no one will ever see. <laughs> this and the is that, and the Huracan, also yeah. no one will ever see that, mm -hmm. especially a Lamborghini. This is one of those cars you really have to be careful. I've never been careful right in foot? my life. <laughs> I'm not starting today. I know. Okay. All right, to look at, that looks old. But like, in a good way? No, it doesn't even look old. I think it looks modern-ish. Okay, it's... sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. Okay. They did a great job with this. Yes, they did. They, I, I'm not gonna uh, argue. They did a great job with this, but what I think is what happened here is they took what was a really sharp, angular, angry looking car right. and then took a sanding block to all the corners. And modernized it. But look at this wheel arch. Look at this angle. This has the, the same thing. But it's this smooth thing. Uh, excuse me, you're, you're putting fingerprints on my very expensive paint job here. How much this is that? This is Designo Grey Magno. Designo Grey Magno. And it's 2,500 bucks. 2,500 dollars. And all it does is keep your car clean for about five minutes once you've cleaned it, and then it's immediately dirty again. Yeah, isn't it like if like a bird poops in this, you need like a special like spray or something to get it off? It, it's not. Yeah, but you also get good luck for years. Do you? That's what I was told. That's what you were told. But yeah, this has the Panamericana grill, the AMG grill. Oh which, yes. Which is a sad time because, so originally this was taken from the AMG GTR. The grill, yes. Put on the 63s. Yeah. Wonderful, That's great. wonderful That's decision. That's a good idea. Now yeah. it's on the 43s. What? Yeah, they put it on the 43s. No, they're GLC not. GLC 43 no. already has it, I know. Oh. It's dilution. Dilution that's, of the brand. That's horrible. That's, it's a cool grill, and I think that it would look good on this, because I don't like this no, grill. No, people, okay, so people try, so this is from 2019 onwards on the C-Class. Yeah. People on the C63. Yeah. People are modding these and the one, years before this with this grill, and it looks fake. It looks weird. Well, fine, I'm going to snap my fingers, and it's going to appear. You ready? If that didn't happen, that would be brilliant. That <laughs> However, as modern as this looks, yeah. it also suffers from some of the modern changes these days. I'll show you it to the back. Okay. Because as good as this car looks, yeah. and they both look great, yeah. these exhaust tips are incredibly fake. That's not news though, because every AMG exhaust No, but I've never studied them before. Okay. Oh, you like the click in there? That's good. Yeah, how it's old are you? It's my Mercedes Creek. Yeah, let's see if I can. Um, Oh, hey. <laughs> Mercedes, you're not. It's, it's fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Um, these are yeah. these are fake. Yes. One is, that. but when you look at the real exhaust, one is a circle, one is a square, and it's not even oh. lined. It's not even lined up with the tips. <laughs> no, it's not. There's you know that like some engineer sat there for like ever drawing out exactly how to make the sound create the, the oh. dispersion. It's and just, it's, it's like it's like calf muscle implants or abdominal implants. It never needed to happen. It never needed These to happen. These are real. Yeah, it's from an era where exhausts were exhausts. I know, just stay real. Rant over, I guess. Yeah. Should we look at the interior? Yes. Okay. Wow. It takes sitting in here to realize how far Mercedes have come. I thought you were going to say, wow, it's cool. No, it... It is, it is, <laughs> but they've done an amazing job with the new stuff. Okay, listen, this is actually a fairly well-optioned one, right? And you get lots of stuff. I see, well, it's got carbon fiber. It's got the carbon fiber. Which is a bit gaudy. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'll point out a few issues that I have with the cabin, but like, let's just step back for one second. For the price of what is like an Audi A3. With Quattro. With, ooh, with Quattro. You're getting a, a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 rear wheel drive sports coupe. That is true. And it right? says 6.3 V8 on the, on the cluster. Yeah, it says a 6.2. Yeah, it's confusing. Oh. I know. Yeah. But they say 6.3 uh, there. It's, it's, it's a throwback to the, to the older. But that's just a lie. Yeah. It's, a, well, it's, it's the name of the car. It's an homage. Okay. Wait. Oh, yeah, like yours is a 6.3. Mr. 4 liter bi-turbo V8. But it doesn't V8. say it. It doesn't say it. But it does. On This even doesn't even have a badge on the side. 
Because it's been questionably debadged. <laughs> Fine. Okay, here's my Alcantara. St- yeah. Well, it was Alcantara. It anyway. was. This is the yeah. bones of Alcantara. Mm-hmm. That's what's left. Yeah, it's a fossil. This is what happens when you have an Alcantara steering wheel. I know you like them, but this is the result. Seven years later. Yeah, and if you don't want to look at like these, you have to really take care of them. Okay, uh, there's, there are things I can complain about this. So these buttons make it look dated. The phone. It's a phone pad. It has heated seats, though. But this has yes. something I massively miss from Mercedes, which is an actual shift knob. Rather than this, it being on oh, the steering column. Oh, yeah, that's right, on a steering column. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it feel like a truck. Yeah, no, otherwise this has all of the same stuff that your car has, pretty much. But, I mean... Except none of it. Uh, fine, I mean, whatever. It has, this, it has the, uh, the selector for my transmission. Also, here's my traction control off button, which you're not allowed to use. What's that? Don't, don't, not let's allowed. go, let's not go look at the, the new no, one. Okay, fine. All right, welcome to 2000. These seats are so bolstered. Yeah. Like, way too bolstered. Are you actually taking this to the racetrack? Interior is really nice. <laughs> Interior is really <laughs> nice. Why are they All so right, these are $2,300 seats. $2,300. You don't need them, though. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an option. Okay. As is the carbon fiber here, 1500 yes. bucks. No, we don't get to complain. Why? Because we creak. Because we creak too. Yeah. That's the new rule. Okay. You have an IWC Schofhausen. We do have an IWC Schofhausen. <laughs> this is AMG here. Yeah. The sun is melting our brains. <laughs> it's really hot in here. This is the old interior. This is the old command system. Well, we what's haven't... funny is that compared to that, it doesn't look old. <laughs> no, it doesn't look old. But this steering wheel is new gen. So it has these yes. little AMG. It has a dynamic dampers. You can change it to all the different modes. Yep. It has also AMG dynamics, yep. which we found when we first got in this car, allowed you to change the car into a not so kosher mode. Oh yeah, which is historically bad. Historically, historically insensitive. And that way, so now that puts me in master, master race. Yeah, well, well, I mean, they, don't, they didn't do it intentionally. Yeah, this happened. Well, they haven't changed it since we complained. That's true. They're not listening to us, clearly. My sunroof is bigger than yours. Yeah, but it's not one piece. So? All right, you can have that one. <laughs> That's right. So this gauge cluster, which is interesting because it, it, it looks fine. I like it, but it doesn't match. This is a gloss finish. That's a matte finish. No, they've done a they've done a great job, and the, but the C class is about to be refreshed, so we have to be yes. slightly nice. They to just keep throwing sense. stuff at it until they refresh it. But completely. this thing has twenty five thousand dollars of options. It has. What? It has, someone went through and just ticked everything. <laughs> twenty five thousand yeah. well, dollars. Well, actually, no. It could, they could have spent another two hundred and fifty dollars and got red seat belts. So they showed some restraint. <laughs> but other than that, it has this carbon fiber stuff, okay. the seats, the ventilated seats. Oh, it ventilated? Yeah, that's yeah, important. Yeah, so this $110,000 we're talking about this car, Ooh. which is a huge jump. Well, I just want to point something out. You can almost, like within a reasonable five, 10 grand, get that car for the price of the options on this car. Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. But IWC Schaffhausen. IWC Schaffhausen. Yeah. What more needs to be said? Can I drive this now? You should drive it. Okay. Okay. Oh, James has left this in Sport Plus for me. <clears throat> Race mode. All right, traction control off. Oh, we're in manual mode, hello. And I have a dial so that I can say how much off I want. I'll do all the way off, please. So the beauty about a well-designed car, and especially a well-designed AMG, is that even if you turn all the systems off, it should still be easy to handle. I mean, it's like handling a well-designed 50 cal, but should still be easy. <laughs> really fast shifts. A snappier transmission than the old one, and it is faster. But it doesn't feel that much faster. Interesting. Nice progressive breakaway. Easy on throttle oversteer. However, no matter what you do and how close you put those turbos to the engine in the V, there's still just a little bit of lag, unfortunately. There's not much you can do about that. So the old one immediately has the leg up. In the old one, which isn't fair, it's not that old. It looks like Thomas has tried to glue the traction control button. There we go. Yeah, that's off now. I'm gonna be naughty. Oh, the throttle response of natural aspiration. 
I missed that. Still exists in some cars, though. Thomas said that this thing likes to lose its back end. Don't know what he's talking about. It holds its weight well in the corners. I don't know, something about this just feels a bit more jolly. It can turn even little corners, little roads. Fun! That AMG, they're such angry engines. I love it, but it makes me feel aggressive. These cars get me in trouble. They really do. I don't say that about many cars, but this, every car on the road feels like I got annoyed at someone before. They were going the limit. And I just got annoyed at them because I'm in an AMG. <laughs> Oh, that's an addictive noise. Oh, man. It, the, what, the, the ride, though, he wasn't lying. It's definitely harsher. It's just crashy compared to the older one. And we're out here in the middle of nowhere. Imagine in the city with potholes and train tracks. Okay, I only needed to refresh my memory of this car because I have driven one of these before. And the thing that I remember about it is that it, it does take itself maybe a little bit more seriously than I wanted to. That older one just feels like more of a, a wild card. It feels a little bit more edgy. Like you, you, you kind of have to know what you're doing. This is easy to drive, but it's not as insane. And I feel like if you're buying a top of the line 63 AMG, it should be insane. It should be. This one doesn't quite have that level of like, ah, let them drift. The value of the old one is just, you can't argue with that. Under 40 grand Canadian for all of that performance and fun. That's the one that I would have. If I wasn't currently fixing my old BMW, I would consider one too. Assuming that this would treat you well in terms of reliability, and I don't know if it would, what a theater this is for 39 Canadian. So much fun and a better ride than the new one. If I was to get a new one, I still think my money would be on a C43. Whether it's an AMG or not, it doesn't matter. It has so much power for Toronto. The formatic is wonderful. And I think that new C63S just has too harsh of a ride. This is so much better. Which one would I take? I don't know, that one's 110 grand, the new one. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I think out of these two, I think it would have to be this, to be honest. <sighs> and this car, more obviously to me, is something that I want to get on the track. Because that naughtiness, that rear play, rear end play, I've got in trouble for saying that before. Who cares? That rear end play is so much fun. 